where I spent a lot of my time, yesterday at least, and um, what I found out is when I did some research on my face structure and my head structure, I found out that I could just get an emoji for free, and for those that are my age and older, you'll remember Elmer Fudd, right? And uh, he used to say, I thought I saw a rabbit. And, uh, but anyway, so I could have, <laughs> I could have got him for free, but anyway, I, um, I, I, I've been playing around with that a little bit, and so I'm really, really bored, even if I've, uh, when I get to that. It was funny because even yesterday when I was working on my emoji and I thought about Elmer Fudd, and uh, when he used to say, I thought I saw a, rab a rabbit, and um, I watched my grandkids walk their rabbits with a leash. And um, somebody texted me and said, hey, do you see what's on Facebook? And I said, yeah, they're Denise's kids, right? But anyway, uh, that's enough craziness. You're right, getting ready for a service, and we're just getting wired up here and preparing to have a service with you. And so we welcome you today. I'm going to get our team to come. And uh, just to report in, there's five of us here. And uh, Luke will be off. Luke don't care if he's on the camera, so he's off to the side. And Melanie and Jake is coming, and then Matthew has just got the computer things all worked out. And as people are logging on, let me say this as we get started this morning. If you've got a prayer request today, if there's things going on in your life, if you add it to the comments under Seaways or under Cardinals uh, Facebook page, then the girls will text me if it is a private request that you don't want announced at the service, then you could private message uh, the both uh, settings in the sense of Seaway and Cardinal, and we'll make sure that remains private. But if you put it under the comments, it's public. But we would love to have the chance to pray for you today. And so I'm gonna get Melanie to uh, open our service in prayer, and we're gonna enjoy some songs together. God bless you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, God, and God, I know most of us right now are in our homes, God, and it's just so different how we uh, are coming together on a Sunday morning, God, but it doesn't matter where we are, God, right now, you are here, and God, I just pray right now that as we enter into praise and worship, God, that you would just fill everyone's home that is watching, God, that you would just be in their home, God, and that you would just help them and bring them into a place of worshiping you, God, that we would just kneel before the one true King, God, and truly worship all that you do for us. So I pray right now as we just go into this first song, God, that you would just enter into homes, God, that we would feel it, God. May we feel your presence come into our homes, God, in Jesus' name. You're the only answer to the darkness And you're the only right among the wrong And you're the only hope among the chaos And you are the voice that calls me on Louder than every lie My sword in every fight The truth will change
There's one thing that seems easy for me these days is to go before the Lord with clean hands. Because it seems like that's all we do is wash our hands. And um, But the question is this morning, is our hearts clean? Amen? God, you wash us clean. And um, you, you do a work. And so, so we, again, we say to you this morning, if you've got a prayer request this morning and and you just throw it in the comments, and, and the girls will get it to me in a little while. But, but we just want God to touch people today and to minister to people. And in a few moments, after we get over the announcements now, when Melanie comes and shares her story, there will be an email show up uh, for those that I've got your address. And, and uh, the way that that will work is if you wanted to log on, come to the altar. We're trying something a little different this morning in sense of miking an iPad. And trying to make it a little clearer. But uh, we want you to know that we want you to be able to come to the altar. The reason that it is stressful sometimes for us here to go live. The reality is we want on the spot. So if you need prayer. And for those that uh, are watching. And you're just on your way to God. You could let us know by private message in Seaway, if you're watching that one, or private message Cardinal, we got folk that will be in contact with you immediately and praying for you and helping you and asking questions like whether you need a Bible or anything like that. And so if that's where you are this morning and we are coming in with a live feed into your home and you'd like to say yes to God, right? Then this morning, you want to be washed clean then we want to give you the opportunity to do that. You can do it public. It's one thing uh, to do some a private message, but I can tell you, you would be better this morning to put in the comments and say, hey, I just accepted Jesus as my personal Savior, and I want to do a shout out to him. And so uh, we encourage you to do that uh, today. Let me give you a few announcements uh, before Melanie comes and um, so uh, Matthew's there, and uh, we're going to give this a try. So I'm going to go off the screen, and the announcements are going to show up. So don't leave us. It's just the announcements. And so, so Matt, you can throw up the first one. You will see three ladies Bible study. Let me just say that the one there, Choose Joy, they will do a restart. My goodness, it must be this week, the 29th of April. So that's really close. Choose Joy will do a restart. You see that email address? Email Roz, and you can be part of that course on uh, Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. There's also a ladies group in the morning, same thing Wednesday, and another one, Identity, uh, which they're midway through, but the restart for that one is May the 25th, and I'd encourage you to take that one. It's a good course. There is a couple men's groups happening, and uh, that's Tuesday night. And then the Band of Brothers, which I don't think I've changed the announcement yet. It says Tuesday night, but that one is moved to Thursday night. Okay, so if you see that one up on your screen right now, then uh, that's Thursday night. Let me also mention uh, prayer. 
And we got two prayer ones running right now. Uh, you're going to see Thursday at 10 a.m., but also we've got a prayer meeting tonight at 6.30. And so um, you need to uh, be part of that. Let me mention about Seaway Youth, and uh, that one is, should be coming up on your screen. Seaway Youth is uh, tonight at 7 o'clock, okay? And then they meet also Friday night. So they're quiet, but we're so glad, and we'd encourage the young people to come and be part of that. We tried to play a game uh, last week. I don't know who won. I think I won, didn't I, guys? The game? No, Matthew's shaking his head no. Were you there, Matthew? And I didn't win. Okay, so I didn't. But anyway, we had a fun time playing the game. Let me mention Joy. No, I think Alpha is next. Alpha is next. We uh, launched the Alpha course, and that's going for four weeks, so that's three more weeks. And the reality with that, I will run that again. So I'm doing four lessons, and uh, it's pretty good. Next week's lesson is, is Who is Jesus? And then why did he die, and how can I have faith? And uh, I think we had seven. If the people that are watching this morning, if you were part of that Alpha, listen, uh, uh, we talked a lot about church and, and all that, but I'm so glad that God gave me a break from going to church, right, that I could come and zoom in with you for that Alpha course. Let me mention Joy. I set up Joy for a Tuesday morning at uh, 10 o'clock. I think a good time, if this works, is April the 5th. And so, Shirley, if you're watching this morning, April the 5th for Zoom, and that would be our seniors coming together for that. Let me just talk about, you would have received a reminder email from me yesterday, but let me mention again giving. You'll see the two addresses for Seaway and for Cardinal, and we'd encourage you and if you're watching this morning and you want to give, then we would encourage you to do that. May 5th. Oh, sorry. May 5th? May 5th. May 5th, April 5th Melanie. Oh, April 5th is already gone. May 5th for? Joy. No. Oh, yeah, Joy. Why do I have April the 5th? Sorry, don't be confused. Maybe it may, is May 5th the Tuesday? Because I probably looked in my calendar. Oh, that's too bad. Matt, you still got them emails up there? You could take them down now. We'll look up that date, and I'll give you that date before we get it. That's the first Tuesday of May for Joe. May 4th. May 4th. May 5th? May 5th. Yeah. May 5th. Good. I got it right just the wrong month. Okay, that's the lovely thing about being live. So Melanie's going to come. She's been doing some great videos, hasn't she? And so uh, she's going to come and... Um, and uh, minister. So I'll wipe off the mic. You just stand there for a second. All these practices. Good morning. Oh, Good morning, Seaway and Cardinal uh, kids, not youth, kids, youth too, I guess. You can be a part of it. So this morning I want to talk to you guys about prayer. So something that maybe you guys are doing a little bit more at home is praying, because I know I am, because, you know, there's not a whole lot to do at home, so why not work on your prayer life? So I want to talk about Daniel. I'm sure you guys have all heard the story about Daniel and the lion's den. So it's in Daniel 6. If you have your Bibles, you can turn. I'm not going to read the whole story. I know you guys love my mal translation, so I'm just going to give you the, the quick breakdown. So Daniel was this huge prayer warrior. He prayed for like hours every day. And he was a very um, important person to King Darius. King Darius was the ruler at the time, and he sat under King Darius. He was in the, um, like one of the governors in the, that time. And so there were some people that were also in that group of governors that really didn't like Daniel. And so they tricked King Darius into making a law that you couldn't pray to other gods or do anything um, that would not be fully serving King Darius. So um, David obviously loves God way too much to be afraid of a law. 
So he's like, no way, like, I'm going to continue praying because, like, I believe that God will protect me. So um, David gets busted by the um, governors that have tricked the king into making these rules. And so they go back to the king and they say, listen, uh, Daniel is still praying and he's not listening to the rule and you made this rule. So, like, you need to deal with this or we're going to have, like, this uprising and so sure enough, the king, but he doesn't really want to because he really respects Daniel, he goes and he grabs Daniel and they have to throw him in this lion's den. So um, I know in Sunday school, like we picture this big hole with like lions living in it, in it. I'm not really understanding why there was lions in the hole, but there was this den, it's full of lions. And when you get thrown in there, you can't get out. And so they throw um, Daniel in the lion's den and Daniel does what he does best. He starts praying because that's why I got thrown in there. So he's not going to stop now. And how crazy is it? Like, I mean, I've never seen a lion, a real one anyways, like that close. But the lion's mouths are sealed shut. Three days later, after three days, and like, I mean, I don't know how much food these lions have, but after three days, they come back. Or I think it's actually one day. I don't even think it's three days. That's my bad. One day. The next day they go back and the lion's mouths are closed and they haven't touched Daniel at all. So I know sometimes we pray and, you know, sometimes we think that God doesn't always listen to our prayers. But I can promise you, if, Dan if God can answer Daniel's prayer and close lion's mouths and protect him for a whole day and a whole night with lions, God will listen to your prayers. And sometimes the answer is no, which... I know sometimes sucks for us. I know we all hate hearing no from our moms and dads. It's even worse when we hear it from God. But even if his answer is no, God listens to our prayers and he cares. So I want you guys to pray this week. If you guys have stuff that you, you know, you need God to answer or you're feeling overwhelmed, if you pray about stuff like that, God will, is listening and God will answer your prayers. So I'm just going to pray with you really quick. And um, then Jake's going to come back and we're going to go into some worship. So, dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for these kids this week. God, I pray that if anything this week, even above e-learning, God, I know e-learning is so important, but God, I pray above that, God, that their relationship with you would grow. God, that they would dive into their Bibles and start reading some of these stories that we're introducing every couple times a week. God, I pray that they would start praying, God, when they feel overwhelmed or stressed or nervous or whatever it is that they're feeling, God, I pray that they would look to you. And just start to strengthen that relationship that they have with you. So I just pray for our kids, God. I pray that you bless them this week. And until we see them again, God, I just pray that you would be with each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. So go get a snack and come back and worship with us. Let me just say, uh, we got some prayer requests already coming in. And we want to encourage you. And under the feed there, just put your request in. And... Um, we just want to pray for you a little bit. So let's do some worship together, and let's just believe God for some great things in this service. God bless. I choose to worship. I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Forever be my song. 
an email if you're on our email list and uh, that you could log right on to our Zoom meeting that's happening right now and you can come right to the altar and um, one of the people that put a comment in was Kevin Kasselman and uh, I'd have to go back and look I, I, I think it was his back and his hip but I, I, I've moved because Kevin put a post up on Facebook yesterday and, and, um, and th this is what it said uh, how about depression and suicide, alcoholism and domestic abuse and child abuse and bankruptcy and substance abuse and loss of job and loneliness, just to mention a few. And you say, Roger, why, why are you reading that this morning? And the, the reason that I'm reading that post this morning is because there could be folk that are watching today that you're depressed. There could be folk that... that You've thought about suicide, and, oh, and, and so often, like I, I, I know we can, we can give out tons of stuff. We could, we could, we could be like the the April uh, Christmas feel. But but if people are going through this, then we, the church, and, and I, I don't know if Kevin realized it or not, but I, I think this is profound in the sense that we ought to pray today. And I want to, I want to agree with him and others today. Uh, I, I think for me, when it comes to anxiety, and I, I don't know where I, I, I read this, but when it comes to anxiety, I, I fight, uh, I flight, I, I, I exit, or I freeze. And um, I'm sure with all of these. But this morning, you've arrived, and, and whether it's at the altar at Seaway, or whether you're just viewing it online right now, we want to pray for you. We want to believe God for anybody and everybody this morning that would that would log into this service. And so so we're going to pray. I know that uh, Jim and Joyce sent a message that I think it was Jack's uncle. Jack's uncle passed away and, and they want our prayers. Let me just go back to my text. Uh, yeah, Jim and Joyce. Jack's uncle passed away and so so Jack and Lynn would need our prayers today. And so we want to lift him up in prayer and, and, and this is the reason. Let me just make sure that Denise, that's, no, she didn't and so let me, we're going to go to prayer. Jake, could you just do the verse again? And, and one of the verses at least, and uh, 
Let's just move into a prayer time. If you've got a request, they can get it to me in time. And if you want to log on and you want to you want to come to the altar, I wouldn't recommend that you just get off the feet because you already are with us. But still, if you need to come to the altar this morning, you can do that by that Zoom tech or that Zoom email that I sent out minutes ago. It's not the best for the music, but what you're doing is really coming before the Lord and just saying, God, I need you to touch me. I need you to heal me. And so if you've got anxiety, if you've got depression or you're suicidal or whatever that list contains, God, we want to come toward that today in the name of Jesus. We're not going to back away from any issue. Because our God, our God, we're going to do that in a few minutes, but our God is able to supply all of all that. This is the mighty. Thanks, Luke. But our God is able to supply all of your needs according to his riches. Boy, I got some fine folk. You know, that we're, we're going to be the team of five, you know, and uh, looking after each other. But uh, let me encourage you. Jake's just going to sing the tune again, and then we're going to come to prayer. Let's do it. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your family and your children and their children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning and in the evening in the coming and in the going in the weeping and rejoicing he is for uncle is passing away and so uh, they need our prayers so how can we do this you know that I think we can unite our hearts right now I really believe that we could really connect everything right now and just believe God for what God wants to do and so would you bow your heads and would you close your eyes and if you're dealing with any of the situations that I mentioned this morning, we just want to ask you to, to believe with us. And so let's pray. Father, we come in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, with all authority, with all power, with all might. Lord, we don't shy back. We don't shrink back. We step forward towards any need, towards all the needs, regardless what size, how big, how small. God, this morning, we come to you. And Father, this morning, we ask you to heal. Not because in any form of a command, but a request with authority. You want us to step out. You want us to have faith. You want us to believe. You want us to trust. And this morning, we do that. And so this morning, heal. Heal Kevin's back. Heal, heal his hip, Lord. Touch Jack's uncle right now in the name of Jesus. And any private messages... People that did not want to make it known this morning that would have sent a private message to Seaway and sent a private message to Cardinal in the name of Jesus, minister to them right now. And any now that would already put them up, even this moment, or the person that sits there right this second, can't muster up the strength, don't know how to get around it, are muddying their way through life, that they're depressed, uh, they're fighting, they're freezing, they're flighting. But this morning, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to touch every person that would log into this broadcast in the name of Jesus. And all God's people that are watching said, Amen. God bless you. Jake, could you do a song and I'll get ready to preach. Would you do that last little bit, uh, that song again, and I'll get ready. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children.
children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in the coming and in the going in the weeping and rejoicing he is for So if you've got your Bible uh, with you, and uh, I just want you, and you can pull it up uh, if, you, um, if you're new and you don't have a Bible, you should let us know. We'll, we'll mail you a Bible so you know that. They're ready to mail with actually a, um, they're ready to mail with a little devotional if you would like that. And so um, uh, we'd encourage you to do that. But if you don't have one, Go to U version, and uh, I know some folk are starting to use that that are just coming to God. And go to Philippians, Philippians chapter four. We're going to finish our series today, so I want to give you a few moments to arrive there. Uh, Philippians chapter four, and uh, we're going to be looking at verses ten to uh, nineteen, and we're just going to break this down a little bit uh, for you. Uh, this morning, and so um, let me uh, let me say, is there a problem, Melanie, or no? They're just saying stay close to the mic. Stay close to the mic. Boy, that's, I need something different than this if I'm going to do that. But anyway, let me stand still and give you this this morning. Okay, so the first verse that we're going to look at is verse 13. Jake, maybe you could turn this mic up a little bit. Verse 13 says, I can do all things. Through him who strengthens me. Verse 13, and then I'm going to jump down to verse 19. Listen, and my God, everybody say my God. It's funny, but everybody say my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And so the strength of this passage is that I can do all things which Christ that strengthens me and that God, my God, will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory and that also in Christ Jesus. And that's powerful in the sense of a strength of a passage. Now, I want to break it down this morning so I don't have any notes. I just wrote down the order of Scripture that I'm going to read, and I'm going to bring the Bible to you today. And I want to just interpret it as we go. And so my question is, how does God supply all of needs? How does he go about doing that? 
I mean, do we see like manna come down from heaven like the children of Israel? Or do all of a sudden something show up in our mailbox or somebody knock on our door? What does it look like for God to meet the needs of people? Now, let me at least go back for a moment and say that I can do all things through Christ or through him who strengthens me. And so let me just show you some ways in this passage that at least the Philippian church, right, who was a very joy up church, who was full of joy, always rejoicing. Let me show you how they met the needs of the day. And uh, so, so in concerning to Paul and this biography that he's doing here, let me just say, Matt, if you could throw up verse 10, and it starts off, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly, but listen what it says at the end of the verse. You have revived your concern for me. And if there's anything that needs to happen in these days of crisis is that we need to revive our concern for humanity. I truly believe with all of my heart that our eyes got turned back to the community. I know several ways. I know that, uh, that the food bank and, and two or three other organizations are doing these like mobile meals and I had the privilege of being part of delivering them to Cardinal and I know there's tons of people delivering them to uh, Prescott, but I'm telling you there has been a reviving of the needs or the concerns of other. Matt, maybe you could throw up uh, verse uh, 14. And then it goes on to say, in that, uh, nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my afflictions. And so not only do we need to be concerned about people, my God, remember, will supply all of your needs. Well, we need to be concerned for people in the community, in our community of Christians, but also we need to share. Listen, I'm telling you, it is time, if you would, brush yourself off, get out of your house, don't break any rules, but meet some needs. We need to share the resources that we've got. We truly do. And so that is verse 14. Look up verse 17, and maybe, listen, look what it says. But I seek, halfway through, but I seek for the profit which increases to your encounter. So when you start being concerned, when you start sharing, when you start sharing what you have, then you get an increase. You lay up treasures in heaven. And that is in this text right here. And it gets increased to your account. And so when the recorders or the scribes in heaven are jotting down things that individuals are doing, let me tell you that when you step out, when you're concerned, when you share, then that gets recorded in heaven. Man, the scripture actually says you give a, gl a, gl a glass of water in the, to the least you've done it unto me. And so that's a powerful text this morning. Now, I want us to look at verse 11 again because Paul used the word not twice in this text. Look, look at verse 11 again. Look in your Bibles. Not that I speak from want. Guys, it's not us to be the judge of who needs it and who don't need it. Paul said, listen, I'm not speaking from want, right? And, and so, so it, it was so powerful there. And then, man, if you jump to verse 17, it says, not that I seek the gift itself. And so Paul was not in the sense of saying, listen, uh, we, there's, a, there's a discipline here that we must do it to this group and not this group. Listen, let's be a family. Let's be a church. Let's be churches. Let's Seaway Church and Cardinal Church be the kind of DNA that just not only is concerned about those that are around us, not only shares our resources with others, but builds up uh, rewards in heaven because we do so. Guys, I, I got to share this one, and, and uh, we're getting through this. Look at verse 11. 
again. Like, look at verse 11. Look at the end of it. After the not, I don't speak from one. He says this. He says, for I have learned. I'll tell you something. If we don't learn anything during this crisis, no, let me finish reading it, okay? Because I think this could really speak to us this morning, especially if you're already a Christian. I, I actually think we should practice this. We actually should be already really good at this if we've been saved a long time. But maybe we fall short. Maybe we fail. Maybe we stumble or get entangled with stuff. The reality is, Paul says here, For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance. And he throws two Greek words in there, that I am. And so he says, in, in, the, in the frame of that verse, verse 11, he's actually saying, not only have I been content, have you. And are you content? And Christian frame, we need to be content. If there's anything today, and your Bible is saying this, not just Roger, if there's anything today, we need to learn to be content in whatever circumstance is happening. Oh, I, I, I bet you verse 12 is worth reading, Matt. I know how to get along with humble means. <laughs> right? I'm sure there's people out there with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. Right? Listen to him. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry. Of having abundance and and suffering need. And so this morning, I wanted to stand out to you today. This is so important. We are in a circumstance, and Christians ought to be rising up and ministering to anybody and everybody that's got needs. And if you're here today, and you are not a Christian, but you've logged into this, this podcast or this broadcast or whatever you call it, and, and but listen, I want to push you out to do that too. Come on, we need a, 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 a humanity who cares deeply for everybody and anybody. Now let me finish this morning. Uh, I only put the, in verse 18, Matt, I only put the last part of the verse, right? Because if we do this, my God will supply all your needs. So if you're concerned, if you share, if you lay up treasures in heaven, right? If you don't like, just look at people's like wants, but you actually, it's not the gift itself. You need to be the giver. You need to be the one that gives. And, and this circumstance is any circumstance, whether it's prosperity or poor, regardless, we look at the need and say, hey, God, tell me what to do. Tell me where to go. Tell me how to do this. But listen to this now. Look at this one, 18. There will be rise up before the Lord this fragment aroma. I think that, uh, I think when uh, Noah came out of the ark, why? I tell you, that must have been a trying time. It says that he did a burnt offering before the Lord. And then it says that, that it rose up into the Lord's nostrils. And after he heard and smelt the aroma that was coming from Noah's burnt offering, he said, I will never flood the earth again. The question is, Christian friend, we ought to be doing the concluding part of Philippians because we never want anything like this to happen again. We should care for humanity. Boy, this just smells right, doesn't it? It just smells like something that we should do. Let me give you the second one here because it's threefold. It's an acceptable sacrifice. I think it's Romans says that we are to lay our lives on the altar as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And so, so we get this idea that we are to give our lives to the cause of Christ, and which I would encourage you to do that. But when we step outside of our comfort zone and meet the needs of others and we realize and revive the concern and share and lay up treasures in heaven, there's this acceptable sacrifice. God is happy when we do that. It just floats up to him as he watches us do it. 
Hey, listen to this one, last one in the three. It's well-pleasing to God. I think it was twice. I think when Jesus was being baptized, uh, the heaven opened up, the dove came down, and God said about his son, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And I think like that's, that's like, like if you were the son, that would have been really cool. The other time, I think that it was, it was actually, it's recorded, and somebody might have to correct me with this, but I think it was Mount Transfiguration. I don't think the dove came down. I think that Jesus was like lifted up off the earth. His face shone like, like glorious. And, and there were apostles there watching it. And again, the voice came out of heaven. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to me. Let me ring out. I am not the father. I am not the son, Jesus Christ. Uh, I sometimes don't even represent what the Spirit wants to do in my life properly. But let me speak as an authoritative figure when it comes to the scriptures and one that is called to preach the word of God. I'm telling you, out of the thresholds of heaven rings, this is my son, this is my daughter who's meeting that need, who's sharing their resources, who's laying treasures up in heaven, and I'm well pleased with them. Well, I'm telling you, it would be better to please God than your pastor. It would be better to please the Holy Spirit than your church family. Let's do what God wants us to do this day. And listen to me. His peace is our contentment. I can get through anything. <laughs> the other night in the youth meeting, I was telling them, I think on Friday, I got up early. It would have been into fours. And I went out in my garage and I worked on the bike, my, my two ATVs. I did some yard work. I got my boat out. I can't fish, but I got my boat out and got some things all fixed up with that. And I think I went back inside five o'clock. Listen, and listen, I got a chance to interact with all kinds of people that day. You say, Roger, no, people walked down the street. I didn't go close to them. But I'm telling you, I interacted. Listen, if we stay in our little, get outside, get dressed, get outside, and let's do something great for God. And you say, Roger, you're telling us to break the rules. No, stay with social distancing, but it's time for the church to be alive. Jesus told us, don't hide your light under a bushel. Let it shine. And it's time for us to shine in our community. It really is. And let me say it because I want to be clear. And I don't want to get like crucified for telling you to do something that's wrong. Right? But listen. God's going to speak to you. God's going to call you out of your homes. And God's going to have you do something. God's going to tell you what to do. You just need to trust him. Let's not stay. Let's be safe. And let's do what Jesus wants to do. I'm telling you right now that Jesus won't call you into anything that he won't provide for you. It is a sacrifice, but Jesus will and, and, and give you the resources that you need. So I'm going to get the team to come back. I think we're going to sing one more song called Raise a Hallelujah. And we're so glad that you joined us today. And let me encourage you. Let me read this one again as they're coming. Matt, throw up verse 19. Would you? It says, and my God. Somebody say my God. And my God will supply all your needs. According to his riches. Sometimes I think we're the riches. We are. Right? It was God's riches at Christ's expense, but his grace is measured upon us. And so let's be in Christ Jesus. Listen, don't be in yourself. Don't be into yourself. Let's be in Christ Jesus. And let's do what he calls us to do. God bless you today. As we conclude our service, our, our series, and let's joy up. And may, my prayer is that you can do it. Because you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. God bless you today. Praise the hallelujah.
in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the only.
a young girl who committed suicide. And they've asked us to pray for the pain. And so, pain for that family. I'm just, uh, I'm thinking about the pain that Jesus went through. And he'd know, he'd know any pain, any pain that we're going through. These are definitely days of growing pains, aren't they, in our homes? Trying to get through some of this stuff. I know I, I got, it's got to be a stress on some couples and families and kids and the homework and, 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 and homeschooling and some parents are not equipped to do that. But can't imagine what this family's going through. The pain. I want to I want to believe God before we go. I want I want to pray for Nova Scotia and all that stuff. Boy. All the pain. I don't know if this is the best way to close the service. But I am going to I'm going to believe that that in a moment in your homes wherever you're watching there's going to be a sweet peace settle into you in your house and even those requests whether it's in Nova Scotia or whether it's this young girl and her family and any connections to that family if you would I know that everybody maybe that follows you're not comfortable with this but I, I just like to put my hands out in a receptive kind of way Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Wait for that sweet presence of God. Because he's watching that radiant gaze that's never distracted, that's constant, that continuously searches our hearts and our lives. So Jesus, this morning, here it is. God, let this same peace that I feel in this room right now, the same, the same overwhelming healing virtue, the warmness of your presence and your spirit, let it settle in every home right now. God, there's no distance. We're just agreeing together. God, touch that family that lost that girl. Jesus, I want to come against even the thought pattern that would cause a pe person to think that. And I speak life in the name of Jesus. And God, all the demons and all the devils of hell that would bring anybody to the point of depression, discouragement, and defeat to even think that it's worth to commit suicide. I come against all the demons. And in the name of Jesus, with your word in hand, Lord, I ask you that peace and joy and contentment and comfort would flow today upon everyone that's watching. That God, the mental stuff that's going on in our lives, there would be a peace that would... God, I, I actually, I see a wave. I see a wave in your spirit. God, I, I, I see it. It's crashing in upon our souls right now. Just receive it. Just embrace it. It's God's spirit. It will help you. It will comfort you. It will do what it needs to do to help you get through. Jesus, touch these folk, I pray. In Christ's name, hallelujah. Let me just say this morning as we finish this service, that if you need anyone, listen, like you, you might have a contact, you could go to our site, you could private messages, and, and we'll get the right person for you. We will, right? We do have boundaries in the sense of ministry, but still, we'll get the right person to minister to you and, and check up on you and, and keep you safe. 
because we believe that what God wants to do on the planet, it's not, it's not to destroy, but it's to bring life and life more abundantly. So Jake, you want to do uh, just shout a little louder one more time? So would you do us a favor as we finish the service? Just shout a little louder this morning. God bless you. Sing a little louder. them as they go out this week. In Jesus' name, amen.